Hey guys, how's it going? We are live. Welcome to this kind of like last second. Uh, I don't know what we're going to call this, Marcus. Kind of like an AMA slash uh, important update slash webinar slash debate. Who knows? You know, we're, we're, we're just going to call it a lot of things, but Depends basically, we're here for, we get, for you. If guys. it's going to be a what debate or not, we'll see. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I, 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 I said I would be the moderator, not the referee. So you and you and Alex uh, not allowed to uh, to fight uh, here. But, anyways, guys, welcome. We are here to talk about the new communication guidelines that were are going to go in into place in about um, well, I'd say about three three weeks time um, now. And basically, what that means for Amazon sellers out there, you know, regardless if you use Helium Ten or not. Uh, but then we're also obviously going to talk about uh, uh, an update on the things that we're working on and uh, have changed and are changing to be in compliance. And the reason we're doing this is because, you know, we did make a blog about it uh, to let everybody know. Um, and people have been asking questions, though, to customer service still about, you know, kind of a little bit concerned about the new the new updates, what it means for them as Amazon sellers. Like, you know, what does it mean that we have to. Uh, you know, send it in in a certain language. You know, what does it mean? You know, like we really can't put images of our product in our in our messaging anymore. You know, um, should I use follow up? Should I use request to review? Like, there, there's a lot of questions out there. So, what I want everybody to be doing, we're we're going to be talking just for the first few minutes here, just to, to bring everybody up to speed. But um, have your questions ready. I know a lot of you guys have questions about this. And, um, and and you're gonna have even more questions once you once you hear uh, the recap of the updates of what's going on. So please, please uh, feel free to ask them. If you're watching on Facebook, uh, somewhere where you're watching this, there, there's a description, and then there's this link to click on so that we can see your name. If you're on YouTube, you're good. We'll be able to see your name, but uh, make sure to hit that uh, in Facebook. I think it's called a streamyard.com forward slash Facebook. And it just allows us to, to see who the heck is asking us a question instead of, it just saying Facebook user. So, so please make sure to, to hit that. So, um, with me, I've got, uh, Alex and Barkus, you know, they have, have, or are working as product managers with our follow-up tool. So there's, there's no two people in the company more qualified to talk about the messaging requirements. Uh, so Alex and Barkus, welcome to the show, former, uh, and current, uh, also weekly news host. We get to see you guys a little bit more now. Yeah. How's it going, Alex? It's going well. Thanks for having me. Is, on. is your house always that clean there in the background, or did you just get that set up for for today's broadcast? We keep it clean. We keep it clean around here. Barkus didn't do that. That's why he has a green screen right, right now. He's, <laughs> he's like he's got his stuff thrown thrown all over the place. But that that's how I roll too. Little children change that up just a little bit. So it's a. <laughs> I think I'm winning the debate so far. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Cool. Cool. <laughs> Um, all right. So Alex, uh, maybe you could, uh, just maybe, you know, for the next couple of minutes, uh, and then Barkus can fill in the blanks of what you, uh, may leave out, but just talk about that, that thing that came out a few weeks ago and, you know, not necessarily in the helium 10, um, you know, mindset here, but just in general, in general, what are the changes coming to what sellers or how sellers can communicate with buyers come November 3rd? Right. So the main message was about proactive messaging from sellers to buyers. And there was a lot of things that were maybe uh, gray areas before that are a little bit more well-defined now about what you can and ca can and cannot do, um, as well as a lot of formatting, styling, um, and then just when you can message as well, too. So uh, they've they've drawn kind of deeper lines in the sand. They made it very black and white as to what you can and cannot do. Um, and again, as you said, this was released back uh, kind of mid to late September and will be um, officially enforced on November 3rd. So they've given us a little bit of time to um, adjust and for you sellers out there to adjust um, your email messaging, your email marketing that you're doing um, to your Amazon buyer customers, right? Um, so there's a lot of big things that we're looking at. Um, some of the, some of the main ones are when you can send a message, right? Um, so there's a lot of things that Amazon will do already, and they don't want you to double dip. They don't want you to be sending duplicate emails to what they're already sending out. So the big ones are are, are and, and these are not necessarily new, but they really wanted to reiterate these facts because I think they'll be enforcing them a little stricter, which is things like 
just a, a simple um, order confirmation saying thanks for your order or a shipping confirmation saying your order has shipped or if you're just saying it's just been delivered, right? Any of those things that Amazon is already covering those bases, you should not be doing anymore. If all you're doing is, is just sending some sort of confirmation, then you need to stop doing that. Um, and then there's there's other there's still room for, for other things you can do. You can you know there's lots of orders that might be customized or or, or if it's a large item and it's, it's got a special delivery or there's lots of cases where you would need to reach out even before something's delivered to maybe fulfill an order. So those are like some of the big things that you want to look at too. And then you can obviously still do the request to review. It's still just one per order. Um, and then you can do other things too, like if there's product instructions or warranty activation, all those sorts of things too. Um, and then the, the last one that you mentioned is, is the uh, language of preference. That's kind of like a hot topic as of late, uh, which is basically saying uh, you should not be sending messages to a buyer uh, in anything other than their, the language of preference that they have chosen. And basically what that means is if you look at .com marketplace, the default language of preference is English, but um, but customers on Amazon can choose to change their default uh, language of preference to anything supported in that marketplace. So .com supports English and Spanish. So they could change, and, and this is not a typical thing. Typically, uh, customers stay to the default language, but they have the option to change their preference to something else. So they could change it to Spanish, in which case you need to communicate at least those automated email proactive messages should be in their language of preference too. Okay. Uh, Barkus, did uh, anything else uh, that Alex might have left out or did he just hog all the spotlight from you right there? <laughs> oh no. Oh, and let him. Um, so I, he covered, he covered the basics. Um, there's a couple of things that I, that we, and, and me and Alex took a while to go over this. A um, couple of things that, that, I would like to point out is like, this is kind of unusual for Amazon to come out and be like, Hey, these are the changes we're going to make and they're going to be effective in two months. So while they are restricting how you communicate to their buyers, it's cool because they're letting us know it. I don't think that, uh, I mean, hopefully this is a continued uh, uh, communication that, that Amazon has with sellers because uh, we, we've all been uh, slapped on the hand to a certain degree by doing something that we didn't know um, was was against terms of service. And they're like, oh yeah, well we updated our policies like two months ago, and uh, you know, now you're suspended for for whatever, and or blah 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 blah. So that's what's nice. This hope, and the reason I say that again is like, hopefully we continue to see this open line of communication with Amazon in the future about all all types of policy changes. Um, and Amazon is kind of referencing. There's a PDF that um, that is a, and I'll I'll put the link in the comments on the YouTube channel. There's a link to the PDF that Amazon that we're going to be referencing, and this is from Amazon. It's inside Seller Central. I just want to give it for ease of access. But Amazon's kind of considering that the end reference point, um, and they are pretty clear on on everything. They're not 100% clear on on a couple of things um, that we'll go over. But um, this is nice. It's new. Um, and the, the reason they're doing this is to further stop, uh, of course, manipulation, but also fraudulent uh, acts against buyers as they as they talk about. So um, that's really cool. Um, one thing about I'll, let's see here. Um, so Alex talked a little bit about what like proactive messages. And if you don't know what a proactive proactive message is, it's anything that you send using a tool like follow up. Um, you know, uh, and he, he he pointed out a couple of things that are um, pretty critical here is like, you can't send a thank you email anymore. Hey, thanks for ordering it. You can't send an order confirmation. You can't do that anymore. Like go ahead and change it now before November 3rd. Uh, November 3rd is gonna be a busy day in the United States. So you're probably not gonna be thinking about your follow up email sequence on that day. So um, you can't do that anymore. It, and it's really redundant. So if, you, if we all buy on Amazon because we all sell on Amazon, uh, if I buy anything, I get an email, I get a notification. I had to turn off Alexa because it was letting me know that I just made a purchase. Uh, so there's multiple ways that Amazon notifies people that they just made a purchase. They don't want, there's, it's unnecessary. It's redundant for us to do the same thing. 
So, um, but it is nice to, so there's, a, there's another thing in there too. Alex talked a little bit about PDFs and then Hassan just asked a question as well um, about PDFs. So Amazon has been very clear, which again, it is, it's, um, uh, it's, it's unusual. So we, we like that though. Um, when it comes to PDFs, they are very clear that it can only be three things. It can only be a product instruction. It can be warranty information or an invoice. So if we're selling in the United States, invoices aren't an issue. For other countries like the, uh, the EU and in, in countries inside the EU and outside of that, like some countries require you to send an invoice. That's necessary. Product instruction is great. Um, you can't send a, a recipe book. You can't send a how to do something with my product. You can't send anything like that that's the uh, in that manner. What you can send, though, is warranty information. So this is great. This is like warranty information. You can have anybody sign up for for any reason for whatever warranty. If you have like a, if, especially you have something that's a moving parts or an you know, electronics, hey, sign up for our lifetime warranty. What do you need to do to be eligible for a warranty? You have to give typically your name, some way to communicate, uh, and an order ID. So it's a lead gen tool at that point. So um it's it's great it, it, it's a it's a great and you can you can do it a couple of different ways you can have uh you can have an external link in that pdf for the warranty purpose but if you have a link in there and if amazon goes to that link and it is something besides warranty you're going to get in trouble so you need to have some sort of landing page you know using something like portals from helium 10 or anything a pay a single page that's warrant that gathers information specifically about warranty. But if you try to do anything else and Amazon catches you, you've been warned. Um, so, but that's that's cool. That's a good thing. They're changes, but they're good changes. So, um, and there's there's a, there's a ton of stuff in here that we've updated our FAQ about, um, and uh, there's a ton of things in here that we're uh, finishing up on a blog that's going to go out before November third as well. Um, Alex is actually. Um, they've been making a lot of changes in the tool itself. Um, and it's important to realize like the tool is follow up has, has been a great tool uh, for gaining reviews and seller feedback. Um, it's not it's not bulletproof because we can't control your language. And ninety nine point nine percent of the people that, that have gotten in trouble as far as a temporary messaging ban in the past. It's either been the language like what you're actually saying to people or the method of how you're doing it. If you're asking for reviews multiple times, if you're sending two or three emails in the, within a 24 hour period. So uh, I'll let Alex talk about a little bit more about those changes uh, that's coming to follow up soon. Yeah, so we uh, just one quick question here. I think it was, uh, they asked it while Alex was talking about the uh, request review per order. You can do one each still, right? You can ask for a, a product mm -hmm. feedback and you can ask for, a, or, I'm sorry, um, order uh the, the seller feedback, feedback yeah. and the uh order review uh product review right yep okay all right so now yeah let, let, let's let's just go a little bit you know i see some more questions coming in and, and guys keep, keep keep them coming in we'll, we'll get to everything today um but uh the biggest question that i've been seeing in, in customer service when you know we'll go through and i'm sure you guys have too is like okay well you know come november 3rd is is helium 10 follow-up going to be going to be kind of uh compliant for for these new rules and the, at the end of the day guys it's still on you guys you know you can use the amazon platform in a way that amazon platform is not meant to be used and you can get in trouble you know like you, you can sell some drug related things you know maybe and, and then you'll get suspended and the same thing you know we'll, we'll build things into to follow up but you know i'm sure you guys would be able to manipulate something and just you know, bombard somebody with emails or something. That's not just because you can do it. We're not, we're not saying you, you could do it, but, but what are some of the things where we're at least going to be able to facilitate the ease of staying in compliance with some of these uh, changes, Alex? Right. So there's a few things that we're trying to do. First, I'll start with talking about the automation builder. So if you're familiar with follow up there, there's kind of like this um, kind of workflow builder that you can use to trigger your email. So basically there's an event trigger, which can be something like order delivered. Uh, there's a wait time action, um, which is how long you want to wait. And then that you can trigger the send mail action. Um, and then we're actually adding a third one. Uh, I know a highly anticipated feature is, is uh, basically just being able to trigger Amazon's templated request a review and seller feedback email template. Um, 
And so, you know, you can already do that in Seller Central manually, but if you want to automate that process, you'll be able to do that in follow up as well. So uh, some of the things that we're doing is we're ensuring that the, the wait time, depending on the action that you're doing and what you're doing within that action, we're ensuring that the wait time is compliant. Um, and what I mean by that is uh, for request to review, if you're using the request to review tag in your email and or um, or I should say just or or using the request um, Amazon's request a review and seller feedback. We're only going to allow you to do a, a delivery date or, or order delivery trigger because that's the only time that you should be sending that is after it's delivered. And Amazon is saying that you have a five to 30 day window after the estimated order delivery date to send that out. You cannot do it within the first five days anymore uh, and you cannot do it past 30 days. So uh, we're ensuring that it's not even possible for you to set that automation up in a, in a window that is not compliant. So that's one of the things that we're doing. Uh, we're also doing some things, uh, adding an additional filter um, to, to make sure that your uh, buyer's language of preference matches your email language. And we can talk a little bit more about that. Um, and then two other things that we're doing. So in the editor, which is what you would use to um, customize the email content that you have, like the subject and the body of the email, uh, we've made a lot of changes to the editor itself. So things that uh, Amazon is saying, style formatting things that it does not allow, we're restricting those things too. So for instance, um, it says, Amazon says you can only have three font sizes. You know, it's a kind of like a strange requirement of your email body. Uh, but we used to have, um, some people have, you know, 50 different font sizes. We used to have only four, which was kind of extra small, small, normal, and large. And we've, we've reduced that to just three font sizes. So you couldn't possibly put more than three in there. Um, they're also saying that you can't center or right align. So we're getting rid of those. You can only left align. There's no alignment option anymore too. So while it does feel like we may be taking some things away, we're doing that to ensure that you're compliant. Same with emojis. They're saying no more emojis. We're getting rid of the emoji piece in the editor. So stuff like that. We have kind of like a laundry list of all these little things, uh, even, two line breaks is the maximum that you can have. And so we're not gonna allow you to enter more than two times in your email body. You won't be able to save that email if it has more than two line breaks in between each line. So we're doing basically everything that we possibly can to, to steer you in the right direction. As Bark has said, there's still gonna be ways around it, right? There's still gonna be ways you know, in, in your language of the body or something like that too, um, that, that Amazon could flag you for. So you need to watch out for those things, but we'll be trying our best to, to build these things into the product. Um, and then the last- I, I have a quick question along yeah. those lines. Like for example, me on my case study projects, whether it's project X or project 5K or any of these ones I work on, I, I'm obviously following up with customers. And, and me personally, um, I never use the um, request review button. I always love using follow-up instead. So I've got some, uh, I mean, I'm fairly compliant you know, um, but, but, you know, maybe one of my current automations, I I'm putting the image in there, uh, or I'm using the double space or whatever the heck, you know, now, does that mean that I need to go in to all of my existing automations and then like re like redo them from scratch just to, to, to go under the new templates or, or are these going to be automatically disabled on November 3rd or what, what, what do you suggest there? Right. So we're doing a few things there. So uh, the, the scenario you're talking about is I have existing emails that are probably non-compliant, right? So th the, the first thing that we're going to do is, is with this new update that I'm, you know, the editor, for example, when you go in and you want to edit those existing emails, first, I would recommend that you do that, right? You don't have to do it from scratch again. Go to your existing emails that you have that you're using and you know, if the whole point of the email is just a shipping confirmation, then yeah, disable that one. You don't need that anymore, right? Um, but if it's something like you said, request a review, I want to use the custom template. Totally fine to do. So when you come back into the editor, you'll notice that it's a little bit different, right? You'll you'll see those changes. No emojis, only the three font types, right? Things like that. So you'll see that it's only going to allow you to make changes that are compliant, and then you can resave it. The other thing that we're doing um, is within the next couple weeks, you as a Helium 10 customer will get a notification. So look within within the follow up tool. Uh, if you don't see it there, we'll probably follow up via email as well. Um, but what we've done is we basically have kind of sifted through all of our customer emails looking for specific things that may be non compliant. 
and we'll be flagging those emails and automations and letting you know that, hey, you might wanna take a look at these automations and emails. And we're doing that based off a number of things. Like you said, product image. Amazon saying, don't put the product image anymore because we're gonna be putting it in there. So some things we can do automatically as a part of the tool, like get rid of the double lines. We'll kind of reformat some of your emails automatically. Uh, but there's other things that you may have to go look at and fix manually. And those things will identify and notify you on. So it'll say, um, Bradley, it looks like you have e uh, email templates one, two, and three for automations one and two that look like they may not be compliant with the new communication guidelines. You may want to take a look at these and here are the new guidelines that um, from Amazon. So we'll, we'll give you an attachment of, of what the guidelines are and where you might want to look. And you know, there may be things that fall through the cracks. Like I said, it could just be, you know, you could have a language issue that we can't really account for within the tool. Um, so it doesn't hurt to go through all of yours now and start looking at what might not be compliant. Um, but if you're not looking already, we'll make sure that you try to get notified to go and, okay. and look at your emails. All right, here's a question for Barkus. Uh, Candace says, hey guys, I've been doing Amazon for four years, but just got verified on Amazon Handmade. Do the new Amazon rules carry over to Amazon Handmade? Uh, you're muted, Barkus. There we go. Okay. Uh, it's a great question. I have products in handmade and yeah, they still apply. They apply to anybody that is selling uh, any, any product on Amazon. So yes. This, uh, I want to, I want to answer this question from Vital about inserts real quick. Yeah. Um, so the, the language in the changes, there is nothing in here that is specific about inserts. So it, number one, it, it's still, it's perfectly legal to have a, a product insert card in your packaging. Um, you just have to follow the rule. Like you still have to follow the rules that Amazon has um, in there. You can't incentivize. The biggest thing in there is incentivizing reviews. Um, we, we see the pictures all the time in social media, like, oh, look, these people are doing this, this, and this, I get this card. It still happens every single day. Doesn't mean that you can do it. Uh, now, is Amazon going to look through every single product in every single warehouse every single month? Not likely. Um, so there is, uh, I would consider it a low risk. I still wouldn't recommend doing it because uh, it's it's a reviews are a big thing for Amazon. They want the best products with the best reviews um, in front of the best customers, and that's kind of been their mo since day one. Um, so the effects on the, on the product rules are still the same. Like you can have, and you, if you want to put a product insert in your packaging is perfectly fine. If you want to lead them to, uh, opt into a warranty information with that product insert, perfectly fine. That's perfectly fine to do. Uh, you just don't want to do anything that's, that's obvious. Don't incentivize a review. Don't offer cash back for any type of action for them. Don't offer a free product or a complimentary product or anything of value in exchange for an action. So and guys, want, this might seem like who does that? But trust me, guys, we've all yeah. gotten products where the, that people are doing that. And sometimes you see these people with crazy review counts and yeah. that's what they're doing. And they seem to be getting away with it. Don't be tempted. Like Marcus said, that is no go. I mean, r new rules or not. Amazon is very uh, has from day one hated that kind of stuff. And if they ever find it, they'll definitely. Um, yeah. Give you a demerit. If not worse. Um is there a way like, you know, like obviously we're going to automate this, you know, um, to the extent we can, but like just in general, like how would, how would somebody know what their language, you know, if I'm just using the Amazon buyer seller messaging, is there even a way to know what my customer's language of preference is? No, it's just, a, it's a privacy issue on, on Amazon side. Now the new APIs that are out, uh, for this type of, uh, messaging, it allows the developers to, to see that notification of what the, the language of preference is. So, if I lived in, you know, let's say, I, I mean, I live in the United States, but let's say my preferred language was uh, Spanish. Follow up can detect that and send information in Spanish. But as a seller, I, you know, if, if Bradley is a seller, Bradley has no way of knowing what my preferred language is. So, Hablas Español? <laughs> uh, Tamer Tot says, Tamer Tot says, I set up a, 
immediate email sent to my customers upon purchase to get, oh, this is, this is going to be one of those gray areas here. E excellent question. Upon purchase to give them instructions and important tips. Is that okay? Also, I set up emails sent upon returning my items to ask them the reason behind it and offering. So the first part, I think the reason why, you know, people might ask this is because Amazon basically doesn't want you sending messages that are not necessary for completing the order, but to have instructions that allow them to figure out how to use the product, does Amazon consider that necessary to complete the order? The, well, they say that, uh, you know, um, it, I would say yes. Um, because it just, it, it, especially if something, if you need product instructions, uh, you know, I, I, I love the comparison of selling socks to uh, a Bluetooth speaker. You don't need to send instructions uh, with, with socks, just regular socks. But a Bluetooth speaker, you 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 should have some sort of instructions on charging, pairing, that sort of thing. Amazon says when they when you have attachments that you can send product instructions, so it's perfectly fine to send product instructions in there. Okay, that's not the, yeah, that's not the issue. So I'm, I'm going to just reiterate too. Um, his question is is a little bit about like immediately sending that mail too. And uh, I think it would be looked at the same way, right? So even though it may not be necessary to send before it's delivered, it'll still be considered a product instruction, at which case it's still fine to, to send that even before delivery. All right, uh, another, another man, we got, some, we got some good questions here. Uh, Philip says, we sell a product where the customer receives a customized component directly from us after they purchase FBA. Can we still direct them to our site where they create the customized component? Now, if he's talking about buyer seller messaging, the answer no. is 1 million percent no, yeah. right? Because you cannot put outside links in buyer seller messaging, right? Um, so this is a, I, I would like to know a little bit more about the product before I gave you a d definitive answer because I have no idea. I'm not saying there isn't, but I, I can't think of a, a of a product that, that, that they need to like, I don't, where they would have to, where you would have to send them another product. I guess it's maybe, it might be in handmade. I'm not really sure. So um, at the same time, this is what you should be doing according to Amazon. If they need a customized component, you should be using the, uh, there are options inside about buyer seller messaging um, that you need to communicate with that seller, with the buyer to complete the order. You shouldn't be directing them to your site. Um, so there's there's a specific if you go in there's there's um, if you need to contact the buyer before you ship the product, you go in there and click message buyer, contact buyer, and it'll give you it'll say well, why. And the reason they want to do that is because some people have like let's say let's say Alex bought a product from me, but he's turned off all three PL communications like that he won't get my normal like hey would you like to leave a review emails type, those types of things. If you send a message that way, that person will still get it because you're trying to ask them, hey, how do you spell Alex for this custom wooden cutting board that's going to have his name engraved in it for some reason? So uh, in that situation, Philip, you should be using that method um, to get that information to complete the order. All right. Excellent questions, guys. Um, I think they're just asking. Uh, uh, Zishan is just asking about product pictures in the follow-up email. So, so I, I don't remember if you mentioned that Alex uh, at the beginning, but, uh, that is not necessary anymore because Amazon is doing that themselves, right? You got it. Okay. Uh, Christine Mabuhai from the Philippines. Love it. Love it. Um, let us know guys in the comments where you guys, uh, Philippines, it's like five in the morning over there. They waited just for you guys to. Uh, Come on here. Um, all right. What else do we have here? Matt says, will these controls kick out a warning for existing templates or only new ones? I think he's going back to what you were talking about, Alex, about these uh, notifications maybe coming out. Yeah. So uh, in the kind of direct communication, so getting a message um, when you go into the follow-up tool, when you sign into Helium 10 or um, via email follow-up as well. Uh, the, the emails that we flag under your Helium 10 account, um, those will will kind of flag those and communicate with you. Hey, these are the ones that you want to look at. Um, now, if you if you don't 
if you don't follow that and you want to just leave your existing running automations, um, then there won't be any sort of warning for you to stop those necessarily. Uh, however, if you go in and try to edit them and then resave them, if there's something that you that you may have missed, it will give you like a warning and not let you save it if it still meets you know any of the criteria that we're looking for that would be non-compliant. So you know if you didn't update the alignment or something like that that we didn't already catch for you, it'll it'll try to catch it there when you go and try to update your emails. All right. Um, all right, this guys, just remember, uh, quite keep the questions about the buyer seller messaging. I see, you know, some people about asking about the title length and things we, we do that. Uh, you can hit up Barkus or myself or, or Karen, uh, in the weekly freedom ticket extra calls. We, we'd be happy to help you with your Amazon general questions, but we're, we're keeping this about the, uh, the new guidelines. Uh, another quick question here from Oleg. Are these changes for all Amazon marketplaces or for us only? Uh, I would consider them for all, um, it, it, anytime any Amazon makes any sort of change um, like this, I would consider, especially when Amazon's very sensitive about how you communicate with buyers already, just, and it's going to be easier if you apply these changes against all of your messaging. All right. Um, let's see. Claudia. I mean, this is, you know, somewhat along the, the line. So, I'll allow it. Moderator's privilege here. I'll allow uh, it. Claudia says, with a product insert, can we ask our customers to share a picture on Instagram with the product and share with my Instagram handle to win a gift card when we post their pick? So like just the first part, again, in buyer-seller messaging, do not put any links to social media, to outside websites or anything. But yeah. she's talking about inserts. W w what would you guys say to this? I would say it's perfectly fine because you're not, you're not promising anything. It, it's a contest but you're also not asking for a review. Claudia, as long as that, as long as how they do that, if there's no way that they have to like verify their order by leaving a review or something, if you just keep the review language outside of that, and if you don't promise like to, if it's a contest, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna say like, it's gonna be completely fine, but it's always in the details. You know, um, if somewhere, if you have a landing page set up to like uh, where they have to, you know, verify an order or something, and then you're asking them to send a screenshot of a review. That's gonna that'll be a red flag for Amazon. So, um, I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't say there's an issue with this at all. So, because uh, you have to think about a product insert in your packaging. Um, in my opinion, Amazon can't tell you what to do when it's designing your packaging and designing a, a, like you know instructions and that kind of stuff. But you still have to follow their guidelines to a certain degree. So. You can certainly have product inserts and stuff like this, and, and and you're just trying to build brand awareness and it's a contest. There's nothing against terms of service because you're not trying to take sales from anywhere. Like you're not trying to, they're not, there's not a transaction anywhere that's really happening. So all right. Alex, uh I, I don't wanna I, I don't wanna lose my voice uh rereading this long uh, essay right here by Matt. <laughs> I'm just playing with you, Matt, but, but, but go ahead, Alex. You, you want to address this one? Yeah, so I'll, I'll read it just so everyone can hear it. Uh, the new policy has this line including, uh, which or included that specifies the links to Amazon are okay. Does this mean that we can lead, link customers back to our Amazon storefront? That is a very good question. Uh, permitted messages may not be included in the following external links necessary for order completion link or links to Amazon. That's that's a good one. Um, I've seen this question already, and my my initial reaction when we saw the communication guidelines is that linking back to Amazon would be okay. However, I have seen otherwise uh, in some of our research saying not to send customers to your storefront. So I don't know, Barkus, if you have seen a definitive answer on this particular question. Um, so this is one of these the one of the small pieces where Amazon's a little vague which is what we're used to. So this isn't a surprise because in one spot, Amazon has always been like no external links. So, you know, me and Alex talked about this, like me and Alex, like nerd, nerded through this whole thing because we're like, what do they really mean? What do they really mean? I, I wouldn't put any external links because it's been, I mean, I don't know, as long as I've been, I mean, in this space for like five years, like they didn't allow external links. I, I, well, I think like 
September, well, around 2016. So it's been a while that Amazon hasn't allowed external links. I would just not do it um, because they say no external links. They say here until it's HTTPS. I would, if you're going to put a link back for like seller feedback or for a product review, make sure it is the secure link HTTPS. If we find otherwise, we will try to communicate that out because as, as it was pointed out there, it does say links to Amazon. And in a lot of cases, the links to Amazon, they could mean, you know, you can link back to leaving seller feedback or requesting a review, things like that specific to that particular order. Um, but your storefront is not necessarily specific to that order. It's trying to kind of upsell them on another product, essentially. So, um, yeah, so the, I, the other I'm not saying that this is right or wrong, but I'll just put it out there. The other kind of creative thing that I've seen some folks do is try to, if you, if you are branded and you have uh, the actual uh, Amazon store, so if you're in the brand registry, I have seen some people that put like their, um, you know, product instruction video on their Amazon storefront, something like that. And then linking back to our instruction video is in our brand registered Amazon store. And then we also have our products there too. So I can't imagine Amazon would be against that. But again, if you're playing it safe, you may want to stay away from that. Yeah. Okay. And Ryan asked about that. Uh, Ryan, it's nice to see your uh, your uh, name. I haven't seen you in a long time. Uh, he says, I know some people who link to instruction videos hosted on Amazon, internal Amazon link. And that's been popular for a while. That I don't have a definitive answer on. I don't live it because what he's referring to is uh, if you Google Amazon storage S3, you can sign up for a free limited um, uh, where you can host images and videos and it'll essentially have an, it'll be an, an Amazon link. Um, and it's been popular in the past for people to host videos like product instructions and that kind of stuff, uh, unboxing or, you know, how to use a product, best practices, uh, host those videos there and then deliver them through there. I don't have a definitive answer on that, but uh, I would go with the way that uh, that Alex just described it. If you have brand registry, just upload those videos on your listings, then link back to that list the that video on your on your listing. And I think that's that's going to be the best way to do it going forward. All right, excellent. Um, so uh, the, there are different ways uh, if you start using the new Amazon system, which ours is going to to have. Um, I believe. Amazon puts the product image in there automatically. So, you know, some people might be concerned, you know, I saw a question go through like, wait a minute, I see the image go through, it's sent, you know, is this bad? No, I mean, if Amazon is the one putting the image in, that's the whole reason why they don't want you doing it is because they're doing it. So if you see that, don't freak out like, oh no, this is against terms of service. That's that's literally the reason why um, they don't want you putting an, an extra image using follow-up or whatever service you, you might be doing uh, is because Amazon is doing that for you. So if you see that like in your sent folder or something, um, then don't, don't worry, don't worry about that. Just what, what we want to make sure is that do not be putting images still like embedding, uh, images of the product anymore in your follow-up, uh, sequences. Um, let's see here. What does this mean? Unqualified messages I send, uh, Yizak is asking about that. I think that's maybe. Uh, what Isaac is talking about is what we talked about earlier in the call about how you know we'll we'll send you a notification if if uh, if we see something that's blatantly definitely um, not good. Exactly, but it's not foolproof either. Like that, we want to. Alex pointed that out earlier. Like it's not foolproof. You know, you yeah. and, and so and one thing in, in there's like grammatical errors or spelling errors. That's one of the things in the communication guidelines. Amazon's like, hey, you can't do that anymore. You're, so you need to double check like something like language. We, you know, we want, we might have some basic spell check in there, but um, you still need to do your due diligence and make sure that your language that you're sending to the buyers is, is accurate. And, and yep. you know. absolutely. Um, just, you know, I, I haven't been as much monitoring customer service as I was when, when that was one of the departments I worked in, but uh, you know, you guys are in there a lot more for follow up. Uh, any other like frequently asked questions you've seen that we haven't addressed yet? Um, that that maybe we can you know uh eat somebody i see the questions have kind of dried up here but i'm sure it's it, some of these might be stuff that they, they want to ask but they don't realize that they yeah. <laughs> they need to know it um so there's something that came up today uh in in customer service and, and me and alex talked about 
Um, in the buyer seller messages effective November 3rd, Amazon is stating that every message has to have the 17 digit order ID. Every time you communicate with them, hey, we're, con we're basically contacting you about this order. So right now you have a, you have a way to manually do that uh, in your follow-up messages. You can put in what's called a template tag order ID and that'll auto-populate. Uh, going forward, that's gonna be automated for you. But what we've even seeing uh, a screenshot is there's a little warning. If you go to buyer seller central, if you go to your buyer seller messages inside seller central, you can see those messages coming through, being sent and coming through. There was a little red highlighted message that said, hey, this needs to include your order ID. So Amazon is starting to already put these policies in place. That person can still send messages. It, they didn't give them a temporary messaging ban, but Amazon is already giving people warnings like, hey, this is going, you know, and there's a little link to and with best practices from Amazon. So all the stuff that we're talking about right now, uh, if you use uh, if you use any type of custom messaging, proactive messages, it, now is the time to go through there and and um, and, and look through and, and, and update your messaging. We had reports of people getting a permanent messaging ban on their second or third time of getting a temporary messaging ban. Now, I've seen this twice. And. While we can't see every action that a seller does, we can only see what's going through uh, follow up. So I, and I don't know exactly what happened. We got we had a little bit of information from the customer, but they can't send proactive messages anymore. But the good thing is, is they can still send requests or review requests. So follow up will still work for you if you get that. But now you don't you don't want to get hit with that. It 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 looks good. You know, it's kind of a ding on your health score, which is an important metric. Uh, it seems to be more and more important every year now. So it's something to think about. But if you get that, like a temporary messaging ban, typically it's 30 days. You can't send any messages. If you do get a permanent one, it seems like the second or third time that you get in trouble from Amazon, they're starting to enforce those some of these rules now, um, which they said they weren't going to do till November 3rd. But, you know, what can we do? So now's the time to look through these things and make sure that everything's up to date and compliant. And of course, our customer service is here to, to you know, if you need advice um, as well. All right, excellent, excellent. Um, another similar question we just had, but again, I, I, me personally, it's a no. Uh, what do you guys think is using the Instagram, uh, whatever you call it, username, I guess, um, at handle, whatever, uh, in messaging allowed by Amazon? I mean, it's an external link, so that's just a no. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Again, maybe that would be applicable to a product insert or in somewhere in your packaging, but Absolutely. in messaging, definitely not. Throw it on your packaging for sure. Yep. Here, here's another um, outlier here, but interesting use case. So partial re I would say no again. Partial refund wasn't showing the refund tab. Are we allowed to email the buyer asking their PayPal email address or Venmo? Is in the partial refund? No, like any refunds that are happening in Amazon, you know, for uh for your, you know, like like you 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 had a late shipping or whatever the case is, you've got to do that only in the Amazon system. Never take that outside and never start asking for <laughs> for these kind of things in buyer seller messaging because yeah. you'd be just looking for trouble. So, something like that can get your entire account suspended. Um, but I've seen it happen before, so um, it, it's not advised in any way, shape or form. So it looks like uh, the problem that, that Ken has here too, possibly, is he said the maximum amount is $20 and maybe uh, maybe the promised amount or the amount that he's attempting to is, is greater than that. Um, I don't know if you can speak to that at all. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like, again, the, the reason the Amazon limits is there is because that's what it should be. So if, if yeah. there's some like weird use case then if there's a, if you think there's an Amazon issue, like hey, it's not allowing me to return all the tax or something like that, well, well, you you can take that up with Amazon. But but just the rule of thumb is, whatever Amazon allows you to do for the refund, that that's all you can do. Um, yeah, you're be trying um, to do extra. You know, like if somebody buys your product for twenty five dollars, the most that you can refund that person is twenty five dollars plus taxes and, and if there is any extra shipping. So um, Amazon, the Amazon, the seller central just doesn't allow that. Um, so if you're having, but it, it sounds like you, maybe you're having a trouble. Maybe there is something you just need to reach out to seller central for, like Bradley said. Um, I'm not really sure. Um, to send the partial refund, the maximum amount showing is only 20. Yeah, it's, I would contact 
seller central and just explain to them what you're trying to do and, and um, maybe go through, go from there. All right. Any last uh, words of wisdom here um, that for, for that, that some messaging we need to get, you know, pun intended there, some messaging we need to get out to our, our users or, or how people can, if, if, if they're watching this in the, you know, replay and they have more questions, how they can get some more help or whatever you guys want to talk about. So I'll, I'll give everybody Bradley's uh, cell phone number and you can reach him at any time, day or night. And I'll give you his address. Uh, so you can just Uber there and he'll just Good wait. Luck. He never sleeps. Uh, so he's, you know, he's always up. If it's three o'clock in the morning, it's not a big deal. Just try to FaceTime him. Um, he actually loves that. So no. <laughs> uh, just contact sure. customer service, uh, hit us up. So uh, uh, we've got 24 seven support through the chat. Uh, our, what is it? What's the email address for customer support? Support at, uh, support at helium10.com or just within follow up or whatever app you're in in Helium 10, the, that chat button that's on the bottom right. You know, make sure to hit that and uh, you'll be connected live with one of our representatives. Absolutely. Anything, yeah. Anything from your side, Alex? Yeah. The other thing I'll, I'll just reiterate, you know, just keep an eye out for those messaging. You know, when, when you log into one of the applications, um, you know, within the next week, or so just keep checking that right um, to, to see if there's anything that we've flagged or, or, or action items that we've given you to maybe take a, a second look at uh, monitor your email. So some users maybe are not signing in super frequently or going and monitoring the, their email automations. That's OK, too. Um, you know, make sure that your email is updated, that you're checking your inbox if that's the case as well. So, you know, look for Helium 10 emails. Uh, we may be sending it via email as well. Um, and then, you know, even even if we haven't flagged something, I would say go through the different documents that we have. Um, we'll, you know, you'll be able to find them in in some of our knowledge base articles um, and and you know sessions like this that we're doing. Um, just just kind of use the the insights that we're providing and and just take it take a, a a second look at all of your email templates and automations. Um, and 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 look at the guidelines that we're providing, and just you know try try to make the best judgment that you can. Again, even if it's not something that we flag, just just double check all the things that you have and see if it matches up to to the updated guidelines. Um, so Chad O'Reilly had had a, a question, and I I can't believe I didn't I didn't bring this up. So my apologies. Um, so should he's asking should I encourage customers to reach out to me in my listing copy? So um, no, Amazon does not want you to put a condition on why a buyer should contact you. You can let let them know how to contact you. Like if it's on your listing, like if you have questions about this, for, you know, you the way to contact us is hit the contact by uh, contact seller button and, and proceed from there. But even in your copy, uh, like in you with your using follow up custom messages, you can tell them, hey. Uh, you can contact us by replying to this message or using this contact us link here. But you don't want to say uh, so. We, and the reason I bring this up is we saw a lot of temporary messaging bans about language similar to this. Like if you have any problems, uh, just please let us know. We'd love to help you. And as a business owner, that makes perfectly logical sense. Uh, you know, you can do that on your own website. If you have a storefront, you're like, hey, please let us know if you got any problems. Amazon doesn't want that because to them uh, it can be uh, misleading and they they it's a it's a way for sellers to potentially gate negative reviews that's the way amazon looks at it uh, we might agree or disagree um but that's their rule so you can tell them hey this is how you contact us but you can't suggest why they should contact you yep one last question here i see another one here uh no gifts or animated gifts anymore but can i send a thank you still image with my logo or mat mascot incorporated into it i mean that's all the same thing basically right I mean, you can send a logo, but um, uh, you, you can't. You don't want to send just the logo because it doesn't offer the customer any value according to Amazon. So, you know, if you want to have that logo in the body of your message, you just have to make sure there's some value outside of like, "Hey, we got your message," or you know, "Thank you." Like, it's got to be more than that. It's got to have product instructions. It's got to have, you know, care instructions. If it let's say it needs to be hand washed instead of machine washed, or only washing cold water don't throw this in the dishwasher. This is how you, you know, that kind of information. So it can't just be throw your logo in there. Thanks for the work. And then just in, in general, guys, um, even, even the stuff that, that we're talking about here, if you have even one iota of doubt 
at all. Um, with if this is good, not good. The, what I always tell everybody whenever it comes to these kind of things is just ask Amazon itself. All right, and, and so Amazon might give you the wrong answer. They might tell you something that is okay and it's not, but at least you have it in writing. So just open up a case. You know, this is what they're they're there for. It doesn't cost you any money. Say, hey, can I do this? Can I not do this? Um, and then get Amazon to tell you on record in an actual case. Yes, you can do it. And then, like I said, you still might get suspended. You know, Amazon uh, uh, um, representative sometimes might not have all the information, but at the very least, it's definitely going to help you get, you know, reinstated if you can say, uh. Hold on, look at this case number right here. I specifically asked this and you said it was okay. You know, it's definitely going to help you get, you know, reinstated as opposed to you just doing something that you're not sure is okay and then you get suspended and, you know, you have nothing to show of why you did that. So that, that's just a, a good rule of thumb when it comes to anything, you know, URLs or anything. Like I always just, hey, I'll just, you know, people say, hey, how, uh, two step URLs, you know, this has nothing to do with messaging, you know. Uh, how do I know if they're okay? I ask Amazon, Hey, do you have any problem with me using this brand two step URLs? They said, no, of course not. So now I have the full confidence. So that, that use that logic, uh, when, when you're talking about messaging as well. So anyways, thank you, Alex and Barkas for coming on here, um, and explaining this. I'm sure we're going to go on again, you know, possibly, you know, when it, when it gets close to that November 3rd date, just if there's some new things that have come up. So we appreciate your time and effort working on this and we'll see everybody later. Thank <laughs> you.